let's get comfortable. Hello, I'm Minnie and I might have just wasted £75. That's because that's how much it costs to take the JLPT, or Japanese Language Proficiency Test. That might not sound like a waste of money, but here's the thing. It's mid-March now, the exam is in July, and I've put in for the N4 level, which isn't even the most basic level, but I am a complete beginner. I don't know a single sentence of Japanese. It's really from basics here. I watch anime, but the English dub doesn't really do a lot for your language skills. Same as trying to read the menu at Yo Sushi. So I'm really, really starting from scratch here. I really want to learn Japanese because I think it's a beautiful sounding language. I'm interested in Japanese food, Japanese culture, anime, Japanese music. Every year I go to Hyper Japan, which is this huge convention in London dedicated to Japanese culture. They've got stalls, Japanese food, sake, performances, and I just fell in love with it. And I'd love to learn Japanese because I think it would add something to that experience. I'd also love to travel to Japan and I just feel like it would be a lot easier if like, I could read the road signs or maybe read a map or maybe even just ask where the toilet is in Japanese. So once I decided that I was gonna learn Japanese, um, I had a look on YouTube for some advice because it's the font of all human knowledge. If I wanna learn how to tie a tie, if I wanna learn how to speak Japanese, if I wanna learn how many marshmallows a human being can really fit in their mouth, then YouTube is the place to find out. And I did find a lot of very useful information. There are so many great YouTubers who are giving study tips, who are giving lessons even in Japanese, and it's a great free resource. But unsurprisingly, most of the videos that I saw were by people who were already very proficient in Japanese, very good Japanese speakers. I think that's a problem, because if you're already really good at Japanese, something that comes really naturally to you, it might be difficult to imagine a time when that was actually really hard. You might forget things that you found difficult, or it might be hard to remember what it felt like to be overwhelmed by a language as a complete novice. These videos also don't give you a good idea and a good sense of how long it might take to learn and the kind of frustrations along the way. You just see these videos of people who can already speak great Japanese and it looks like it happened overnight. You miss out all of the hard work and effort that went into getting to that level. I thought it would be fun to do a series of videos where you could learn along with me as I start out on my language learning journey. This is by no means going to be a blueprint for how to learn because everybody's language learning journey will be different. But hopefully you can see some of the struggles and frustrations that I face and learn how to avoid them yourself or at least commiserate with me. Or perhaps you'll learn what's worked for me and maybe that works for you too. So we can share our successes and frustrations and you can get a realistic idea of what it feels like to learn, how long it might take you, what you might be able to achieve in a short period of time. So I think I'm gonna aim for weekly sort of vlog style uploads, giving you an idea of what I've been doing that week, what's been improving, what's maybe not been improving, what tools I've been using, and then maybe do some one-off videos on particular aspects of the language that are confusing or interesting, or particular tools that I've used that I've found really helpful, maybe a textbook or an app. I guess now would be a good time to tell you a little bit more about the JLPT, since that's what we're aiming for, and the kind of tiny little bit of preparation that I've done before starting this video. So the JLPT is an international test for non-native Japanese speakers, that's second language speakers. Uh, it's administered by the Japan Foundation, and you can take it in Japan or in several regional test centres around the world. So the place that I'm taking mine is a university in London. It's run twice a year. As far as I can make out, it's usually July and December. And there are five levels. So the N1, N2, N3, N4 and N5. The level that I've put in for is the N4 and that's the second lowest level. So N5 is the most basic and you can basically just introduce yourself and maybe ask where the toilets are. 
all the way up to N1, where you can communicate with pretty much any Japanese speaker, read newspaper, read novels. It's a very well respected and recognised qualification. Certain jobs where you use the Japanese language will require um, a certain level at the JLPT test. I don't have one of those jobs. Um, I'm just a masochist. <laughs> but I'm also a very goal-focused person, so it really helps me to have something to work towards and a date. It guarantees that I'll work consistently rather than just thinking about it and then putting it off and prevaricating. It looks like the test itself, at least at the N4 level, is split into three parts. So there's a vocabulary test, there's a sort of reading slash grammar test and a listening test. And I think the vocabulary test is 30 minutes long, the grammar and reading test is 60 minutes long, and the listening test seems to be 35 minutes long. I kind of lied when I said I was a complete beginner. It's still true that I can't speak a single sentence of Japanese, but I did do a tiny bit of preparation before I started this video series. But all I've done so far, I've learned hiragana, katakana, and a tiny, tiny little bit of kanji. And really, it's just sort of like learning the alphabet. Hiragana and katakana are symbols that let you phonetically pronounce words in Japanese that are written in them. So it would be a bit like learning the English alphabet. You can look at a word and have a stab at pronouncing it, but you still don't have a clue what it means or how to use it in a sentence. So it's not the most useful thing, and it didn't really take very long. And I'll make a separate video explaining exactly what hiragana and katakana are, and how you can go about learning them, and how I did it. Kanji is a little bit different. That's going to be another video again, but we'll get round to that. And I've only learnt a very small amount of that. The other thing that I've started doing is learning vocabulary. So just learning a handful of words completely out of context and without any grammar. Because I thought it would be easier once I started trying to learn the grammar if I had just at least a few words that I could use to start trying to construct those sentences. So they're just basic nouns and a few basic verbs. But again, I will make another video explaining how I learn vocabulary and what I've chosen to learn so far. I think that's about it for the first video. Um, as I make new ones, they'll be available on my channel. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see them all. Uh, also, I'll update this video and put links in the description box of all the new videos as they come out. So, I hope you have fun learning Japanese with me. Sayonara, and see you next time. <gasps> this is so much harder than I thought it would be description box. I can't even speak English, so I don't really know how this whole learning Japanese thing is gonna go. Try and think about the next thing you say while you're saying the first thing. Description box. Description box. We can say the words description box.